Ladies and gentlemen, today we have our week four SPL draft match against none other than the absolute Poketubing goat, my boy Shady Penguin. First of all, we're going to talk a little bit about the matchup here. I'll then go in depth on the team that I decide to bring, and then we'll get into the match here. So to start things off, looking at the team matchup, first thing I noticed, Sneasler is an absolute problem. This thing is oftentimes going to be working with the Unburden ability, which makes it uh, extremely faster than everything I can bring. And he has a couple of different ways that he can do that. Now, at the first glance at the team, you know, first thing I want to assess is going to be that Sneasler. So, it, the way it can get on Burden is going to be potentially with like a grassy seed paired with the Thwacky grassy terrain, which Thwacky is actually kind of a threat with the ability to Terra. That thing can be a little bit of a problem. You know, obviously he also has the Hisuian Zorark on the team, which just always plays some mind games. So I'm really hoping he doesn't bring that. Sneasler could also, you know, a little more reliably get up its unburden with the Fake Out and Normal Gem, which is definitely a possibility. So this is why my Gliscor is going to be very important to keep healthy. It, it can sponge any attack Sneasler wants to throw at me, and I really want to try to waste that unburden and force him to switch. But other than that, Shady has a very scary team. The main reason for that is because of the ability to pivot. You know, he has the Parting Shots potential with the Grim Snarl. He has uh, Intimidate paired with U-Turn on the Landorus. He has Volt Switch, Rotom. And uh, with that type of momentum, he can really kind of whittle it down attackers and just kind of dampen my ability to try to set up a sweep. Um, but, you know, Landorus is just scary in general. Like, could be running something like a Scarf. I imagine, you know, potentially it could be like a defensive Rotom with things like Will-O-Wisp uh, to try to whittle down things like my Bear Tick or just physical attackers in general. He also has Archaladon, and that thing is a huge problem with its stamina and body press. That thing can kind of get out of control pretty quickly, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Now, one important aspect to this matchup is that, you know, Spec Sylveon actually does a lot of damage to everything with Hyper Voice. The only thing I could see taking that nicely would be like an Assault Vest mag mortar um so i'm kind of worried about that thing a little bit you know but he also has the support to be able to kind of whittle down my attackers with the screens on the grim snarl if it wants to go kind of more of a support route which i do imagine it will he also you know has things like uh he has the azelf that can start to set up it can be more of like a support mon it could go physical attacking with ice punch for my glyscore and uh it's looking to be a super interesting matchup here shady has Quite an interesting team to kind of prep against. So I'm excited about it. And here is what I'm going to decide to bring to the match. This is the full team breakdown, boys. First of all, of course, we have the absolute devil bunny, the choice spec Sylveon. Now, this thing basically, it comes in and it just clicks hyper voice. With that specs, it's going to do a lot of damage to everything, of course, barring the potential for the assault vest mag mortar. Now, I also have some other fairy coverage in the form of like hyper beam for the cheese damage, plus like draining kiss to... Uh, be a secondary option in case I feel like they're gonna have something with throat chop. It could be, you know, something like the Grim Snarl, uh, Sneasler, or something like that. So I, I want to worry about not being able to click the Hyper Voice. But uh, Draining Kiss is here to get some health back. But in general, this thing is—it's pretty much here to potentially take hits and do a lot with Hyper Voice in return. Next up, that's gonna bring us to our dude Gliscor. This thing is very important in being able to take attacks from the Sneasler. You know, I really want to try to burn that thing's unburden and be able to switch this thing in. It can't really touch me. They don't have any ice coverage. And I also have the potential to go for a nice little swords dance here. What that's going to do is I can kind of bluff the fact that this might be more of like a support with like stealth rock. I can get up a swords dance and facade does a lot even to like a defensive Rotom, which, you know, I imagine switches in here. Now, also, you will notice I'm running high horsepower over Earthquake on this thing. And that is because of the threat of the grassy terrain being up. I really... I am kind of worried about the Earthquake damage being dampened by that Grassy Terrain. So if I go high horsepower, uh, it actually is unaffected by the Grassy Terrain, unlike Earthquake. And then I can actually get some pretty solid damage on something like an Archaladon. So with the Sword Stance, uh, Gliscor here does outspeed quite a bit with that speed investment. And again, it's mostly just here to be able to come in uh, against the Sneasler, which not a lot of my team wants to do. Up next in the third slot, we have the Hisuian Gudra. So this thing is gonna be an absolute monster of a tank now it has shell armor of course where it can't be crit and working with the acid armor is fantastic if i can get up a plus two defense against pretty much anything and then be able to go for a rest with the chesto berry i can start to really whittle things down with the body press now uh, this thing it has certain things that it can that it can set up against it's running 
kind of just fully defensive, but you know, obviously with that body press being my main form of coverage, barring the ice beam, you know, for things like that Landorus, I can definitely take an earthquake after a, an acid armor, and this thing's just here to just be an absolute menace defensively. So this thing looks super nice. I can kind of go one for one against the Archaladon if it wants to try to, you know, set up against me. And in general, the Chesto Berry after a rest is the, kind of a dagger if I can get that going. So that is going to be the Hisumi and Gudra. Next up, we have the combo Pokemon that is going to be working with the Bear Tick, and that is, of course, uh, the Slowking Galar. So this thing is here with the Icy Rock. Uh, with that Regenerator, it can chill the reception out, get some health back, but more importantly, set up eight turns of snow for my Bear Tick. Now, this thing is working with Focus Blast coverage potential for the things like the Argeladon. I have the Psychic Noise to, you know, be able to hit the Sneasler and Ice Beam for the Landorus. With this defense investment, I'm able to take an Earthquake from like a non-choice band Landorus, and then I can kill it with Ice Beam in return. But mostly, this thing is here to click the Chili Reception, and that is because uh, our next Mon, Bear Tick, looks very nice under snow here. Now, I'm working with, the first thing you're gonna notice is Lumberry on the Bear Tick. The reason for that is because there's a couple different forms of the status that they can go for here. I kind of am really relying on them wanting to click the Will-O-Wisp with the Rotom Wash. Now what that's gonna do is either give me a free turn to set up a Swords Dance or go for a Trailblaze Speed Boost, which I can actually do a lot of damage to a non-physical defensive Rotom. Um, and so this thing, running with the Trailblaze under snow, if I can get two Trailblazes up, I can outspeed an Unburdened Sneasler. Uh, relatively unlikely, but you know this thing can take attacks from the Rotom. I'm not worried about a Will-O-Wisp. It's also going to be my Terra Captain with the Electric, so that the um, the Grimmsnarl cannot go for a Thunder Wave. Um, and in general, this Bear Tick, if I can start to set up Swords Dance in the snow, uh, I'm faster than everything except for like the Unburdened Sneasler and potential for random Choice Scarfers in the back. So yeah, this thing's just it's built to be able to be faster than anything that's not Scarf or the Unburdened Sneasler, and it just hits extremely hard. So that is our boy Bjorn, and our final Pokemon is actually gonna be the Darkrai. So I'm working with Assault Vest Darkrai today, and that is because I can take hits from Azelf all day long, even with like a Dazzling Gleam, it's not gonna do very much. Um, uh, but in general, this thing is just supposed to be fast, and it has coverage for pretty much everything here. Now, the odd thing out is gonna be the Brick Break, and that is because I fully expect them to have the screens on the Grim Snarl. If I can get, bring this thing in and be able to get a Brick Break on those screens, that'll set me up in a great position. Um, but other than that, I have Dark Pulse for pretty much anything, especially Azelf. I have Ice Beam for Landorus, and I have Psychic for that Sneasler. Now, if Sneasler is not, uh, does not have its Unburden, I can outspeed with the Speed Investment here and kill it with a Psychic. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the team. So I feel pretty confident in what I'm bringing here. Obviously, there's some huge threats on the other side, and it should make for a really good game. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, boys, it is time. We are matching up against Shady. This time, I'm doing a live recording just to switch things up a little bit. Normally, I do do post commentary. Uh, but let's give it a little try just to kind of see a little bit of, a little bit of live action, shall we? All right, let's see what my guy brought for us today. All right, so first of all, we don't see any Thwacky, which is actually, it's pretty good for me. I also, first thing I notice, I don't see Magmortar, which you know, kind of opens up the opportunity to lead with Sylveon. Choice spec Sylveon does a lot to the entire team, so I think I might go Sylveon here. Another option is potentially leading Gliscor, expecting the Landorus. What I want to do is, though, I want to see if that thing is Scarf Landorus. Now, if it's a Scarf Landorus versus my Sylveon, I'm also going to be working with some Calcs in the background. Scarf Landorus is kind of what I expect here. Um, but I can take any attack from a Landorus with Sylveon and do a lot in return. So, you know, I'm going to lead with Sylveon. Not a lot wants to deal with this thing. Um, and overall, I'm just going to try to try to have some fun with it and see, see how we can do here. We also notice they do have the Serena, likely for a Rapid Spinner. Unburdened Sneasler is the biggest threat. They also have the Grimmsnarl. If they lead Grimmsnarl, we're in a great spot with the Sylveon. Um, Darkrai was kind of a secondary lead option as I'm faster than everything. But if it's lead, if it's lead Grimmsnarl, it's not going to be great. So let's go ahead and lead Sylveon and just see how it goes, boys. All right. It is a bright, sunny day out here. They are going to lead off with the Grimmsnarl. So... 
that is not bad for me. The bad news is the thing does have the option to set up a screen here. Um, but if it's a dual screen set, it could likely be running, what, like Poison Jab? That's not going to do... I'm going to do like half. If it's not invested in attack. I am just going to fire off a good old-fashioned Hyper Voice here. You know, even through a light screen, that should do... If it's fully specially defensive, however, uh, that's gonna do. It's gonna do over half. So I'm gonna fire off just a hyper voice turn one here and see how they want to go for. It. Okay, they're just parting shot, which that is fine. Um, stirs up the lead a little bit here. We get to see what their option is to switch into a uh, hyper voice here. Thinking it could be something like an Ace Elf. Serena could potentially come in. Overall, not a lot wants to deal with it. Even at minus one, my special attack is pretty solid. So let's see. They don't have the light screen up. Just at minus one, they're going to go into Casper, which is going to be the Rotom Wash. So Rotom Wash comes in here. Hyper Voice does a bunch of damage. And it is also Leftovers. That's all. That's good to know that this thing's running Leftovers because I'm kind of worried about a trick variant uh, of this. So a Rotom Wash, not going to trick my Gudra. Um, I have the option to stay in here as this thing can't really touch me. I don't know what this thing wants to do to me, really. If I'm being honest. Let him wash. If I just did, so at minus one, I just did, uh, boom, boom, boom. So it's not gonna be running the max HP, it seems. Or it is, it is. It's running some defense, or special defensive investment. Likely around, ooh, it might be fully special, specially defensive, actually. Yeah, it's looking to be fully specially defensive. I have the option to switch into Gudra here. I think I'm just gonna click Hyper Voice again. Honestly, we'll see. They're gonna bolt switch. That's what I'm worried about. JD has a lot of pivot on his team, right? So he can work with Landorus with U-turns. Uh, you know, the bolt switch, Rotom. There's, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot that this thing, can, this, this guy can do in terms of pivoting. So staying in here on a bolt switch just to scout what that thing wants to do is great. So bolt switch revealed on Rotom, no surprise. It also is likely carrying something like the. Uh, Will-O-Wisp for something like the Bear Trick, however, for the Bear Tick, if, if he's um, fully specially defensive though, it's not a great Bear Tick answer. Yeah, if I'm running Terra Electric, so. We'll see what he opts to come in on with this next Hyper Voice. He can't go Grim Snarl. Again, Sylveon, this little bunny with our skin ribbons out here, it does it does a lot to everything. Even at minus one special attack, we're gonna be we're gonna be hurting. So it's had to go Serena. And Hyper Voice, okay, doing, doing a chunk. What does that mean this thing is built? So this thing I imagine is likely going to be a, um, kind of here for rapid spin. If it starts to set up too much speed, however, I'm in kind of a bad spot. Um, this thing does, it does a decent bit if it's like a loaded dice bullet seed set at max eight, or max attack. What I have for this thing, I can't go into this because it has triple axle. I could go into Gudra to kind of threaten the sap zipper potential. I could also start to set up an acid armor, which could be pretty nice here. I'm gonna go into Gudra here. I'm gonna conserve the Sylveon here, bring in the Gudra. See what this thing wants to do. I doubt they rapid spin here. I honestly don't really know what this what this arena wants to do, if I'm to be honest. But old thick Gudra should be able to take it. Okay, so they do just rapid spin. They're gonna get that speed boost. Um, I don't know if Serena has a lot of options against something like the Hisuian Gudra. I, I do threaten them not being able to hit me with a grass move, but it's not gonna hit it, even if I was, if I'm not Sap Zipper, so. This thing likely could knock off here. Yeah, it just, it doesn't have a lot to hit Gudra. Knowing that it's not gonna be a trick Rotom, um, I'm kind of free to go for an Acid Armor here. And they are gonna Terra, ooh, honestly. Terra Ground is very likely here. Reason why I'm not super, oh, Terra Fighting actually. Either, either are. So, yeah, the Terra Fighting here is actually, is a bit of a problem here. Does go for the high jump kick. Just commits the Terra Fighting high jump kick. Doesn't have an attack boost here, but that's gonna do, ooh, <laughs> oh, no. That does a lot. Honestly, I was not even thinking about, about the Terra Fighting Serena. Hmm. So that hurts, that hurts a lot. Gudra's basically wasted at this point. I can go for the rest. If they miss a high jump kick, that would be insane, but... Hmm... I, 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 I just triple axle here. 
That takes care of me. Okay, so they high jump. They don't high jump kick, obviously, to not. I want the miss. But we at least get the, the Terra committed here. This thing's at plus one speed, so it's very fast. It has the triple axle. I'm kind of free to go into Brian here. If it's not Terra ground, that's pretty solid. I can then click the Ice Beam here. Or, uh, sorry, click the Psychic Noise. Kind of my only option at this point is to go into the Glow King. So, let's see here. If I go Slow King against this thing, it is Terra Fighting. If it's max specially defensive, it's not going to do quite enough. I just don't know what this thing's going to hit me with in return. I think Glow King has a good matchup here. I was worried about kind of a Terra Blast ground, but... The Glow King is here to set up the Chili Reception, but... In this situation, a Psychic Noise could kill if it's not fully spe H max HP and special defense, which I imagine they have some attack. I guess I can also kind of see how much against my Gudra to, to scout how much investment they have. They have the high jump kick. Terra fighting. Looks to be max looks to be max attack. Yeah, it was a max attack roll, so. I think I just click the psychic noise here. If they end up going into Grim, they're threatened by a sludge bomb. So I go for the psychic noise here. Don't know if he wants to conserve that rapid spin speed boost, but losing Gudra there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a problem. Okay, so they likely do go Grim Snarl. Fine. Okay, so Serena at least we get rid of the speed boost. Did take care of the Gudra, but this thing comes in. Uh, I'm kind of worried about a knockoff here. Not gonna lie. Knockoff here is a bit unfortunate, but what could I do here? Either they go screens, or they go something like the knockoff. I think I might just straight up chili reception here. Kind of see what he wants to do. Rope chop. Oof. Does a lot. But with Regenerator, we're going to be able to get a lot of that health back. So I can chill the reception now. What this does is this brings in... So they, they're running Throat Chop for the Sylveon, which is something I was worried about, right? It, it forces me not to be able to um, click Hyper Voice on Sylveon. But now this brings in potential for Bear Tick, right? So Bear Tick is an interesting matchup. I can go for the Terra Electric, which stops a Thunder Wave. And I'm kind of free to set up an SD. But I'm worried about an unburdened Sneasler in the back. But if it does go Sneasler, then I likely just go right into Glyscore. So I think I just go on Bear Tick here, start to get some Bear Tick pressure going. Let's see what happens here. So I'm going to commit the Terra Electric just because of that uh, potential for that Thunder Wave. I know that he likely expects this, but I think I'm kind of free to SD here. And see what wants to happen here. I'm going to go for that Sword Stance. Best case scenario, they click that Thunder Wave. Um, a probably parting shot here, I do imagine. But the good news is, Bertic puts a lot of pressure. It doesn't do great against the Rotom Wash. However, I do have the Lumberry to try to, uh, you know, get, get that to stop the Will-O-Wisp. So we're going to go for that Terra Electric. I imagine he just, part he just parting shots here. Yeah, there's the final shot. Okay, so no, so no T-Wave there, but we are still going to be at plus one attack even after even after that. So, you could actually go into Landorus here. If he goes Landorus, that means it's Scarf. This is kind of just a good turn overall for me to see a little bit more info about what his team is working with. So, if Landorus comes in here, it intimidates, brings us back to neutral, but also, more importantly, that means... Uh, the Scarf Landorus should outspeed me still, right? <laughs> if it's a max speed Landorus. Alright, does just go into the Rotom here. So, here's where we have an interesting position, right? So, what Rotom wants to do is it wants to Will-O-Wisp me, I, I do imagine. So, here's the thing. Bear Tick is going to be at plus one attack. And the Rotom Wash is... Did we see... Especially defensive. I can Trailblaze here for some pretty decent damage. If it's if it doesn't have defensive estimate, if it's just max HP and no defense, Trailblaze is gonna do around half to it KOs. I knock, I get rid of the burn, and then after a Trailblaze, I'm actually faster than Sneasler after an unburden. So while I could just Swords Dance again here, I'm gonna commit the Trailblaze. 
Okay, so that actually almost knocks it out, which is huge. But it actually just Volt Switch, okay. Probably expects me to switch there. Um, so we're actually, get, we got some good Bear Tick momentum here. And we got some great chip on the Rotom there. Unless it's running a Rest set, it might be running like Sleep, it could be like a Rest. Sleep Talk, something, I don't know. I, I, whenever you bring Darkrai, it just, it brings in, it, it, it threatens stuff. Okay, so they do go into the Sneasler here, so. I do outspeed this thing now, right? Unless this thing's like Sash. This thing could be Sash, honestly. I think I just clicked the Earthquake here. That Trailblaze helped me out. They likely just fake out here. Yeah, there's the fake out, so. Normal Gem fake out gives this thing unburdened. But it's not going to be, obviously, Focus Sash with the, uh, with the gem, but at this point, a Jolly Sneasler. I mean, we've got our snow up. I have a Trailblaze boost. It's at 372 of his Jolly max speed. So that actually does outspeed me. Which is unfortunate. Well, that's actually fine. I can just now, now we've burnt that on Burden, so Bear Tick actually is fine later on. So what I do is I just go into this thing. Gliscor kind of hard walls Sneasler here, so that's why conserving Gliscor for once this thing already has it, then Burden is, is kind of what I wanted to do here. So we bring in Gliscor. A close combat doesn't hurt us. We also now are going to get our Toxic Orb, which is great. The defense drop on the Sneasler is fine. Now the problem becomes what are they going to on an Earthquake? I am kind of free to. Click the sword stance here, or actually, I'm running high horsepower from the threat of uh, the <laughs> grassy terrain being up. However, I don't know if I go for the sword stance here, U turn or facade. I kind of have a couple different options here. I imagine they don't leave this thing in. Probably going to Rotom Wash here. I'm just going to click facade. Okay, so do U turn for a little bit of extra chip here. Sneasler, good news about Sneasler is he no longer has the ability to get that unburden up, so. That puts us in a pretty solid spot. This is actually working out to be a pretty good game. So, I imagine Landorus can come in here and intimidate, but the problem is with Landorus, it just doesn't it doesn't threaten Gliscor that much. So I imagine Rotom Wash comes in. Okay, they're just gonna go into this thing. So, that's fine. Facade does, ooh, with a crit does a lot. And so this thing has the opportunity to go for that Reflect and then a potential Parting Shot. But what I can do, is sword stance here i believe if i sword stance and they reflect then they parting shot and i facade whatever comes in still i'm an sd here i don't imagine he expects the kind of offensive glass score here so that gives us a little bit of an upper hand he probably expected this to be kind of a more of a, a stealth rock lead glass score but we'll see I, surely this thing, you know, it can't T-Wave. It has to go for, it has to go for a screen here. It has to reflect. Sneasler outspeeding even after the trail. I needed two trailblazes, sadly, on the bear tick, but it is what it is. So he doesn't actually, does he have ice coverage on this, on this thing? It does have the ice punch. Wow, the ice punch Grimmsnarl. <laughs> Yo, that's actually crazy, damn. All right, well, that puts us in a bit of a weird spot here, huh? Shoot, dang. I really wondered if he was gonna be carrying Ice Punch on that thing. Well, that is really bad for me. Now I lose my answer to the Sneasler, and this game is probably falling a little bit out of hand for me here. I surely thought, I really thought that thing was gonna, was gonna set something up there. Well, damn, at least I can go into Sylveon here. We know they do have the Throat Chomp, so. Not the best idea to uh, go for the Hyper Voice. However, a Draining Kiss puts us in a nice spot. Rotom is whittled down. I imagine they light screen here, or they just go for that parting shot. I'm just going to click the Draining Kiss. Damn, that Ice Punch really caught me. That's some good prep right there. I'm actually just going to straight up switch out here. 
and they do go into the Rotom. So sack off the Rotom allows them to match up here. At least take care of the washing machine. It down goes that thing. So four to five score here. Rotom got nice and whittled down there. Damn, if Glyscore was able to set up in that position, um, obviously, you know, Serena outspeeds with a, a, a triple axle, but still. In a great spot if the thing was an ice punch. <laughs> so it was like likely running some offensive investment even on that gun, that Grim Snarl. I can actually see kind of what the thing is working with. To be able to knock out Vice Score with an ice punch is pretty impressive. Okay, so now we're in a really bad spot against the Sneasler. Reason is I lost my damn Glyscore. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, I don't really have anything that can switch into this. Good news is it can't go unburdened. And I'm kind of just forced to stay in here, right? Like, I don't really have an option. I can bring in... I can bring in Darkrai after. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I think I just stay in. I'm going to go for a Draining Kiss here. See what this thing wants to do. Just going to Dark Claw. Oh, we live it with 15. Wow. That's actually nuts. Okay, so Draining Kiss not quite enough to do it, so that's where Specs kind of sucks. But at least we get some damage off on this thing, now it guarantees it dies. I mean, it probably died anyway, but yeah, I mean, I essentially I just I just sack off the Sylveon here. Feeling like my win condition is going to be the Bear Tick, for sure. Going to need Bear Tick to clutch it out. Which Grimmsnarl is whittled down, the Azelf is a bit of a problem in the back, but I do have the Assault Vest Darkrai, so... I think at this point... I just go for another draining kiss. They just dark claw. Okay, down goes. Honestly, didn't expect to live that dark claw. That's kind of wild. So, okay. In terms of Sneasler, this thing cannot outspeed Darkrai, and I just click Psychic against against that thing. However, if he goes into the Grim Snarl, it's not good. I'm actually not super worried about the Grim Snarl because I do have Brick Break to break the um, the screen. So. I have to go Darkrai here because it outspeeds it, right? And the Psychic is going to be... I love how you can't even see this thing's legs on the one anime clip. I think I have to click Psychic here, but... So let me let me calc this out real quick. Darkrai versus the Sneasler. Um, a Dark Pulse doesn't kill. An Ice Beam does 50 to 60%, so my best, I have to click Psychic. But again, if they go Grim Snarl, then I can Brick Break a screen. And that's actually relatively fine. The problem is if they go into Azelf after I'm parting shot it or something like that, I'm not great. But I'm just going to click the Psychic. I imagine he can serve the Sneasler here. I mean, Grimmsnarl just switches into this, but if, it, if you know I make the non-obvious play, they're in a bad spot. Okay, so they do just stay in, and that's actually really good for us. So down goes the Sneasler. Big, big threat out of the way. And so, what is the switch in here? It's gonna be something maybe, man, you know, the problem is Scarf Landorus, but I can take a hit from a Landorus and I can Ice Beam it, so I mean, at least that is good. They have nothing that can outspeed Darkrai at this point. Now, this is where Darkrai truly shines, is that, you know, without Unburdened Sneasler, I have Assault Vest I can take on the Azelf. They can go into Grim Snarl here. That thing can set up a screen, that thing can Parting Shot. Um, it can also threaten me with the, you know, it's offensive, so. Grimmsnarl. Yeah, it actually had to run a lot of attack investment to kill with that Ice Punch, which is kind of cool. For them, not for us. But if it's max HP, or max attack, Adamant, uh, Grimmsnarl, and it has, like, a play rough, that does kill me, but it dies first. So, they're going to end up going into the Azelf here. So, Azelf has the fairy coverage for me. This thing cannot Terra. Uh, hopefully they think I'm choiced. I think I just clicked Dark Pulse here. What could this Azelf be doing to me, honestly? Like a Dazzling Gleam, but I'm a Salt Vest covering for that. I don't really know what this thing wants to do. I think I just do Dark Cry shit and click Dark Pulse here. It's gonna actually U-turn, so that's a Scarf Azelf. Very good to know, okay. Scarf Azelf, interesting. There's a lot of chip with that U-turn. And 
they just go, they just go into this thing on the Dark Pulse. Good play. Doesn't do anything. Now, I click Brick Break here, I think. I can't switch into anything else. Um, I need to be able to... Hmm. Yeah, I need to be able to get this thing in and be able to set up the chili for the bear. Uh, but Scarf Azelf does make things a little bit interesting there later. Brick Break just doesn't do much to this thing is the problem. It only has one move slot we haven't seen. It's likely fairy coverage, but I'm kind of just in a spot where nothing else really kills. It also could T- it can't T-Wave because I'm dark type actually. Prankster does not work on dark type, so... I think I'm gonna expect him to go for the light screen here. I'm gonna break break. Does not go for the light screen, just goes for the damage. I die. Cool play well. Damn. All right, that's pretty much game. Uh, that's pretty much the game, sadly. So I've seen its four moves, and none of them are screens. If I have Sludge Bomb there instead of Brick Break, I'm in a much better spot. Hmm, that is not ideal. It's probably running max speed, doubt speed. It's, I, I, yeah, we know that the throat, throat chop kills. Well, I did not play this very well. One massive misplay with losing Gudra, and then also that right there with losing Darkrai. We know the throat chop kills Brian here. Ah, damn it. I don't know, I just have to go bear tick. Well, that's pretty much the game, boys. That's pretty much the game. I'm down bad in this league, sadly. I think I just clicked the Icicle Crash here. Man, I really thought that thing was gonna try to... Yeah, I don't know, I, the, the, the play rough was Definitely the optimal play there, for sure. Unless Bear Tick out speeds here, but I don't see a position where I'm able to get in the Glow King. I mean, they still have Landorus around. I need the snow up for anything to happen here. Parting shot. Okay. I don't think I'm going to be able to get up any snow for the bear chick. Damn, yeah, I, I misplayed this for sure. Bring in Serena here, who definitely lives in Ice Blue Crash being fighting type. Can I get in? I mean, my only... Only opportunity is to try to get in the Glow King. I mean, he, know, he knows that my win con is the bear chick under snow, so... Could be a double switch here. Um, they bring in Serena just because it lives. But, I mean, I have nothing else I can really do at this point, so... I definitely expected Grimmsnarl to be more of a support fella. They go for Petal Blizzard. Interesting. Well, now I click the Chili. What is the Petal Blizzard there for? It's just solid Grass Stab, I believe. I always forget about that move, to be honest. There is Scarf Azelf back there who does outspeed Bear Tick even under snow, so that's the win con for them. Scarf Azelf, not something I prep for. I know there's likely a chance for people to be running stray scarfs just to be able to, you know, outspeed Bear Tick under snow, but I'm also I'm running Focus Blast on this Gloking just for the Archaladon, which did not come today, so interesting. So they're gonna switch. Gonna go into Marianne. Yeah, so we get to tell the chillingly bad joke. Problem is, uh, Scarf Zelf does outspeed Bear Tick here. All right. Yeah. At least we, get, we were able to get the snow up again. I was saying the only way we were going to be able to do it is with the Serena being out, but. <sighs> Bear Tick comes in. Uh, sadly. I'm gonna need an SD here, pretty much. Scarf Azelf versus Beartic. Doesn't actually look like it gets a kill here, but it two hit KOs. I could Trailblaze. Yeah, it outspeeds. Mystical Power actually gives it a special attack boost too. So and that doesn't kill. Gets that special attack boost. Doesn't really matter. I Trailblaze and. Does an Icicle Crash kill here? 
is the question, boys. It's close. Yeah, Icicle Crash is going to do 60 to 75%, so it's like going to need <laughs> going to need the highest roll possible here. Good news is this thing's not running any bulk. That that Trailblaze. That actually that Trailblaze actually looks like it does I probably got a high roll on the Trailblaze there. Um, but what the, the the Trailblaze does is just gives us that speed advantage cuz now us at uh, 1.5 times with the snow. If an Icicle Crash kills here, this could win us the game. But again, I've, I've made some misplays up to this point, but at least we're, we're fighting back. Interested to see what he's going to do. There's no way to switch here. Going to switch. Okay, just kidding. There is a way. Probably because Intimidate Landorus is Wincon. Or just goes Serena, and then Serena brings in brings in the Landorus. Yeah. And then at minus one attack, my Icicle Crash does 42 to 50% to the Azelf, so. I think, yeah, that's a good play. That's a good play. Socking off the Serena there. He's going to bring in the Lando. Man, I was I wish I could have got this Lumberry to do something. It gave me a spot where I could be in a position to get up a free Swords Dance expecting a will of this from, like, the Rotom or something. But listen, whenever Bear ticks around in the snow, I think it's scary. Actually, I was hold on, I was counting minus, minus one attack on Thing. Can actually okay. Gonna go Grim. Now here becomes the question: Does Grim Snarl parting shot here, or do they expect me to predict that and go for the sword stance? Because if I sword stance here, expecting the parting shot, um, I kind of win the game. But the the combo of parting shot plus the intimidate with the Landorus should allow Azelf to take an icicle crash. I could play it safe here and go for the Trailblaze, which gives me another speed boost and kills. But if they parting shot, which I expect them to click, then Lando intimidates and Azelf likely wins. I think an SD is kind of my only way to win this game. This could this is either gonna lose me or lose the game or win the game. I'm gonna SD, dude. Screw it. At this point, it's a very scary, very scary matchup here. Oh, they did attack. It looks like. I went for the sword stance and it did not pay off. Rip. Throat chop kills me. That is the game, boys. Damn. So I could have killed the Grim Snarl, but the problem is I know that then Landorus just comes in, uh, intimidates me, and uh, that I don't have enough to kill the, the Azoth. But. <sighs> Shoot, dang. That was kind of a, that was kind of a toss up there. The Swords Dance pays off if they parting shot, but, you know, they don't, so. It is what it is. I just clicked the Ice Beam here. Uh, Throat Chop actually doesn't kill me. Close, though. But at least we're able to take care of the Grim Snarl, but that's going to be an 0-2 loss. Man, I am tremendously down bad in this league, and at this point, I don't even know what to really do about that. I just kind of have uh, really choked every single time, truly. I think that, in hindsight, I should have clicked... Uh, the kill on the Grimmsnarl there, that would have given me at least a chance to try to flinch the Azelf after being intimidated by the Landorus, but, you know, it is what it is. Miss an Earthquake. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just Ice Beam and we lose. That's the game, boys. Shout out to Shady. Very well played match uh, by my opponent's end. Also, definitely check out his channel if you somehow do not know who this dude is. Absolute legend. Uh, we now drop to 0-4, and, and I likely... Yeah, I'm pr definitely... Extremely bad, but you know, it, it do be like that. Overall, Shady had fantastic preps. Kudos to my dude. Uh, fantastic battler and creator in general. And uh, I just don't know how to prep against people. It just feels, it feels bad. It is what it is. <laughs> I'll catch you guys later.